uh, the boat at our position is leaving our area. Uh, that's a, one's a LCAT. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Amphibious assaults are one of the most dangerous and complicated operations any military can perform. Even once the beachhead has been established, you must get tons of other vehicles and stores ashore. That is where the Landing Craft Air Cushion, or LCAC, comes into its own. Air Cushion Vehicle, or ACV concepts, were invented in the 1950s by Christopher Cockerell. In the 1970s, the United States Navy started working on a hovercraft called the Landing Craft Air Cushion, or LCAC, in amphibious assault missions. A Landing Craft Air Cushion, or LCAC, is a type of hovercraft used by the United States Navy to land personnel, equipment, and vehicles on land. The 87.34 feet long and 47.57 feet wide LCAC, introduced in 1984, can transport loads of up to 60 to 75 tons while traveling at 40 to 50 knots. The LCAC is prepared for operation inside the well deck of a WASP-class landing helicopter dock, or LHD, or an amphibious assault ship. Air inflation begins on order, lifting the LCAC off the deck seconds before egress. Control of well deck activities is conducted by the ship's well deck master. Stationed in the ship's superstructure and coordinates actions mostly through a sequence of colored jersey wearing crewmen, radio, and hand signals. An LCAC exits the well deck by inflating its rubberized skirt, creating an air cushion. It then glides seamlessly over the deck edge and into the open ocean. Ready for operations using four onboard gas turbine propellers. In the area of naval hardware, the Ship to Shore Connector, or SSC, represents an exciting new generation of LCAC, building on a 30-plus year tradition of proven performance. As an LCAC approaches a shoreline landing zone, or LZ, it changes from waterborne to ground effect. where the cushion of air it rides on is restricted between the LCAC's underskirt and the beach surface. Each LZ typically has a designated landing signal officer, or LCO, assigned by a beachmaster unit, or a landing force shore party, to direct the LCAC. The LSO directs the LCAC to its proper LZ for cargo unloading using radio transmission and traditional hand signals. This is done because beaches rarely have unique features for the LCAC crew to use as reference. Deck crew, usually the loadmasters, begin the coordinated operation of unloading, which can comprise various cargo types ranging from trucks and artillery 
to troops. Hydraulic cylinders lower the loading ramp, creating a clear way for the cargo to exit. In such operations, timing and efficiency are critical to ensuring a quick return to sea. And little exposure on the hostile or possibly hostile coastline. But LCACs are not just launched from well decks. Expeditionary Transfer Dock, or EDT vessels, provide the U.S. Navy with an innovative leap in logistics capabilities. This support ship has a semi-submersible deck that can be intentionally flooded to allow smaller boats, such as LCACs, lighter age, and vessels from allied nations to dock. This capability improves the intership cargo transfer independent of sea state circumstances and well decks. Allowing for the deployment of heavy military equipment directly into landing craft without requiring port facilities. This capability is especially useful when collaborating with friendly naval forces, such as those of New Zealand and Australia, which may not have compatible landing craft or transfer sites. However, the U.S. Marine Corps has other ways of conducting ship-to-shore operations. The Amphibious Assault Vehicles, or AAVs, are key components of the Marine Corps' amphibious assault capability. These fully tracked ship-to-shore vehicles have a water speed of roughly eight knots and can transition seamlessly to land at 45 miles per hour, aided by a retractable bow plane, which prevents the bow from plowing under the surface of the water. The operations begin in an amphibious transport dock or landing helicopter dock's well deck. The AAVs, which are loaded with battle-ready Marines, enter the water by driving off the ramp of the ship's well deck. AAVs move in precise formations during beach assaults, avoiding obstacles and maintaining line abreast formation to prevent enemy concentration of fire. They offload Marines on land before returning to the ship. This round journey is repeated until all personnel are delivered or removed, ensuring the amphibious assault's fronts sustained support. As the AAV fleet entered service in 1972, they became harder to maintain despite upgrades. Given the significant age of the current AAV P7A1 fleet, maintaining these amphibious assault vehicles, or AAVs, with the constraints of an amphibious assault ship is an organized and precise effort. Crews collaborate to identify and repair problems using onboard workshops or contacting onshore facilities for parts as needed. In the end, all these preparations are to prepare for actual warfare. Expeditionary warfare 
a pillar of U.S. military strategy, combines Marine, Naval, and Land Forces to fortify a position on hostile territory. Control within the well deck, a watertight, floatable compartment in an amphibious assault ship, is based on intricate choreography. Beacons for positioning, colored vests for visual role identification, and nonverbal communication via hand signals. Some of these vessels have flight decks for aerial support. A fire drill aboard an amphibious assault ship, flight deck is a meticulous, well-orchestrated procedure showing professionalism, and the flight deck is especially dangerous due to the high presence of aviation fuel. The deck crew, identifiable by their colored vests, springs into action the moment the alarm sounds. Aircraft handlers in yellow uniforms facilitate staging areas, while aviation fuel handlers in purple uniforms quickly isolate fuel systems to prevent further ignition sources. Concurrently, the red-shirted ordnance men secure ordnance material with the goal of preventing secondary explosions. The firefighting team comprised of both Damage Controlmen, or DC, and Aviation Boatswain's Mates, or AB, attacks the simulated fire with their multi-purpose AFFF, or Aqueous Film Forming Foam, hoses. Sailors or Marines in proximity suits are the ones who approach burning aircraft to attempt the rescue of any survivors. The usefulness of training is exposed during times of conflict. Conducting operations from the flight deck of the latest San Antonio class amphibious transport docks requires a delicate balance of precision and timing. Especially when managing rotary wing assets, such as the AH-1 Super Cobra, UH-1Y Venom, and MV-22B Osprey. Flight deck activities begin with flight quarters, a shipwide statement signaling the start of air operations. Deck crew wear customized jerseys that indicate their duty, such as aircraft maintenance, pilot signaling, or helicopter movement. First, we have green jerseys, which are the people who maintain the aircraft. We have blue shirts, who are the people who do chocks and chains, which are the little orange things on the wheels that keep the aircraft from rolling. Purple shirts are fuelies, who fuel the aircraft. White shirts are QA, which is quality assurance and safety or medical. And red shirts are crash and salvage in case there were a fire and startup or shutdown. The yellow shirts are the LSEs, the people who launch the aircraft off the deck. From the revolutionary LCACs skimming across the water to the precisely choreographed flight deck operations. Amphibious assaults are a stunning accomplishment of technology and collaboration. The hard efforts of well deck crews, pilots, engineers, and countless others assure the success of these operations.
cementing their status as a critical component of U.S. military strategy. As technology advances, we should expect even more spectacular capabilities to emerge in the future. Greatly boosting the effectiveness of amphibious combat. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.